Welcome to another week live from the King of Games studio. I am Chris, your humble community servant, here again with Mike Madden, Director of Development, Woo! everyone's favorite. Oh yeah, um, considering I'm walking around with the schedule, probably not true. <laughs> so uh, obviously target process, a huge responsibility. What's What's been going on this week specifically? Uh, just to explain, target process is the new kind of agile tool that we're using. Um, it's kind of an agile board on a website, if you will, and it, it puts everything into cards. And so getting everybody converted over to that um, and we're wrapping up a patch that we use that huge, process. Huge, huge, patch. Big patch, real big Massive patch. patch. Um, upgrading, just to give a quick highlight, upgrading from Unity 4 um, up to Unity 5 ha has allowed us to see some huge performance gains and uh, we're really anxious to get that out to everybody and so they can share and, and get those gains that we've been benefiting from internally. Um, and now we're, we're moving on to uh, mapping out some new features as we feel we've addressed most of the major issues that were in front of us. Um, from launch and uh, yeah, it's the fun time. It's a blank piece of paper again to come up with a new feature and the team's actively working on that and uh, Hopefully we'll be rolling out some more information on that in the coming weeks and months. Yeah uh, Saw the entire company out there today yeah. working on the whiteboard getting yeah. stickies out kind of yeah. you know spitballing ideas There's lots of designs kind of etched out all over the office. So yeah. Yeah. it's a good time Exciting it's stuff to talk about. Definitely. Yeah, it's a lot of fun um, you been playing anything lately, or uh, a lot of Ark? Ark, uh, Ark Survival Evolved. Yeah, a bunch bunch of us here are running a Xbox dedicated server, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I happen to know the guys that uh, founded the studio. Oh, nice. um, work with them in parallel at a publisher here in Austin at one point. Uh, couldn't be happier for the success they found, but man, they've really delivered quite the experience. Um, I didn't realize how versatile dinosaurs could be as a <laughs> video game entity. Um, everything from a tool to a, a level ranging threat. Uh, it's been fantastic. Really enjoying it. Yeah, so. they're they're killing it. They're yeah. doing really well with yeah. the Microsoft partnerships, Epic partnerships. They're, it's going they're, real well. Yeah, they're they're it's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> they're 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 working towards the PS4 and, and uh, they just don't have an early access. So yeah. they'll see it once they're done. But yeah, that's what's eating up my time. So, we are Kingdom Games, obviously Kingdom Games ATX on all your favorite social media sites. It's Kingdom Games Austin, Texas. The game that we usually play is Five Guardians of David, as you can see our, our humble heroes back there. Uh, we are live on Steam. We just did a bit of a price drop, so down to nineteen ninety nine yep. for the base edition, twenty four ninety nine for the special edition, which includes your soundtrack, digital art book. And we've got all sorts of surprises coming in the coming weeks, yep. coming months, so yep. development continues. It does. Does. It we're, doesn't stop. No, we're 100% behind the project. Um, we're not shifting our view or getting distracted with anything else right now. Uh, we still have a list of things we want to add to this and, and make it the, the full feature and, and uh, experience we can. Yeah. So. And we just launched, uh, well, we're about to launch massive patch. It's a big patch. It's it's a Goliath side patch, if you will. It, it is a large patch. There is a lot of very good stuff in it. Um, if I was to measure it by height, it is definitely a Goliath size patch. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's good stuff all the way across, from just general performance across the board uh, to fine tuning some of the encounters and, and the character abilities. And I think people will like what they see. Yeah. So switch things up this week. We uh, we have a nice little rotation. We do art first Thursday, second Thursday we do design, third Thursday we do engineering, and fourth Thursday is kind of our whimsical day. Yeah. So last month we brought in Steven to talk about uh, Dark Void, a project yeah. he worked on with, at Airtight. And uh, you volunteered and happened to say you worked on uh, a legendary platformer series. And I'm a platformer junkie, so I was very excited. Yeah. Uh, and that would be uh, the original Oddworlds. You know, yeah. The first three Oddworld games you were... Uh, had a little bit, mostly Exodus, but Exodus. Uh, okay. I came in right at the end and then wrapping up Odyssey. Um, worked on everything from Exodus and then did pre-production for, uh, uh, for Munch, uh, Munch's Odyssey. And uh, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Yeah, uh, so quite what an experience. Yeah, what we have here is New and Tasty, which yeah. is the Unity uh, one to one remake, right? One to one remake. Uh, actually, no. They have yeah. added some new features. They've they've added quite a bit. This is my first time, really. I played it for maybe twenty minutes prior to us going live here. 
uh, just to get a quick peek and to see how close it was to the original. Um, while I would say they did a smash up job of maintaining the, the feel, the look, the controls, um, they also, I think, added some very nice elements like a map for the whole region that you're in, um, as well as, from my understanding, some additional functionality to Abe later on in the game that I'm anxious to see. So yeah. we're going to play it and see how far we can get. It was a blast from your past. Um, yeah, it, it, real special. Um, quite the, this was my first design job after spending a number of years in QA um, at some of the large publishers back in... Uh, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, and uh, yeah, they gave me my first true uh -huh. designer designer job. Um, so it, it will always hold a near and dear place. So was that, now when you say design, like what, what does that really mean? Like, because um, I mean design is such a broad topic, right? I mean that could be sure, so but much. It, like, it, it wasn't that back then because okay. games weren't as big and complex as they were. So you did everything from designing the mechanics, which might be the, the meat crushers or uh, uh, how a lever works, but you're also then laying out the puzzles and timing it and where a ledge is and where the, the lever is with the meat grinder and get the guy to run over. So it was it was all of it. Um, and, and to my benefit, I think, you get exposed to all of it versus now you're a level designer or you're a gameplay designer. Or, and that really doesn't give you as much opportunity to, to understand the full process of these games. Right. Um, so, unfortunately, that to me is a downside of the growth of, of teams. Um, at the same time, the benefit is you do get specialists, and they're able to really focus on owning a part of their craft beyond the general, the, the general aspect. So, uh, you know, it's a give and take. But this, this game, uh, the amount of creative folks that were there, uh, the passion behind it. Um, literally working with the creative director in Martin Lanning who could sit and play the game in his mind and ex explain it to detail using the voices because he did all of them um, originally. Every single voice is, is Martin Lanning and um, it, it was quite the experience to sit in a design meeting with him because he would jump in and out of characters to kind of walk you through how a mechanic would work and uh, it was awesome. So, but uh, yeah, it's great. I love it. I fell were, in love with it right Were away. they surprised at the success? I mean, um, it was, was, was this a big budget title at the time? I mean, no, um, actually, I hope I don't get, I may get a phone call for this. Do you remember Demolition Man? on the Sega Genesis, or not Sega Genesis, maybe it was Genesis. And we made some I remember the scrap movie. Cakes they too. made a video game that was a side-scroller. That's awesome. And it was called Demolition Man, and this was a small studio I in Central California. I had a good job. Well, that the makers of that I took did. that tech How and that engine, eventually tasty. meeting up with Lauren and, and Sherry McKenna, who was the CEO, and they formed Oddworld, and this was the whole idea of Oddworld. Uh, they, the property and the idea was created before the company. This was a story that Lauren wanted to tell and had it all kind of mapped out in his mind. Um, and so the initial object was built on Demolition Man's tech. Wow. Uh, which was a, a decent side scroller for the Sega Genesis. Uh, and scraps but yeah, it, uh, it was cool. It was really cool. And, and they. Um, they put so much emphasis on character to say that they thought it would be as successful. I mean, sure, I think we all do because we believe in what we're working on, and they certainly put in the the effort and had the background and experience to know how to find success. So I won't say it's by accident, um, but to know how big it could be, I don't know. How endearing it became to fans. It's a I legendary. That's, I mean, that's hard to You know, one of the biggest things in the I would agree. I think it really stuck out as something unique, but spoke to a lot of people. Uh, even though it was very alien, like when you see, you know, Abe or the Dawkins, while they're human-like, uh, they're not human, and he doesn't try to hide that. Uh, they have human emotion, so that you can read the same emotions. Uh, but they didn't shy away from trying to make a world that was different and had different rules and understanding to how it worked. They just did a great job of showing how it worked and what those rules are. So, this is 
getting ready to start. God, this looks so good. Um, yeah, they did. I mean, the depth of the levels yeah. and everything. And I mean, it, and that's what we, what I'm sure Lauren wanted to do all along was yeah. full 3D backgrounds. Where the process they did was create full 3D rendered assets, render them out into Photoshop and compose 2D screens of rendered and to lit get the 3D frames of the animation. to get the background. Oh, okay. well, that's how every background was a static image in, in the original. Versus now you're seeing the actual depth and animation of 3D. Yeah. Those were all composed in Photoshop to create those backgrounds. It seems so much more difficult. <laughs> I mean, that's just what you had to do. Yeah, there's no choice. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, all the movies, CGI was all done in-house. Uh, they had a phenomenal CGI team, both from an artistic and a uh, uh, technical standpoint. Um, really a treat to, to live there, or live there. Well, basically you did live there. Uh, <laughs> but to, to work there and to learn and be exposed to those people, because, yeah, they're just some of the most talented folks. And a lot of what I learned is still applied now um, to what we're doing here and, and what we try to do and how, <coughs> excuse me, how we look at our characters and, and try to flesh them out and make sure that we're giving them personality and continue to develop that. Um, here's one of the new things that they added that I just love um, and really <coughs> shows how we drew our maps. I mean, I could almost break that down screen by screen into a grid and show you exactly. And so it's kind of neat to see our original designs almost in how they looked on the paper when we were first <laughs> proposing them. So. Uh, I thought this edition was pretty cool. I was pretty excited to see it. So what what is the day-to-day -day like at, at Oddworld Inhabitants? Is it similar to Kingdom? Is it completely different? Like what? Uh, uh, it was pretty different. Um, again, I, I think times have changed, certainly. Um, but it, the, the drive was on different elements. Uh, you were creating the technology that drove your game versus using an engine that existed. So different challenges um, because all the CGI was was in house. Um, that brought challenges as well to to the scene, um, and really, it was hard to get people's time. I mean, it, you'd get maybe 10, 15 minutes every other day where Lauren would come by and, and he would play everyone's map. Mm -hmm. um, so you really had to make sure that everything you did, you tested thoroughly, it was as good as possible because you had limited time. Oops, I didn't mean to kill him. <laughs> That's vicious. Well, you know. Uh, yeah, we'll move on. That happens. Uh, there's still 298 more to go, you know. What's one? <laughs> So, uh, Odd World is also a very cruel world and very unforgiving. But but the passion and dedication never changes. Ooh. Oh! Nice little bug. Oh, that was that wasn't the bug. He ragdolled, got his head stuck. That was gross. <laughs> Poor Abe. Man, this new version allows him to get tortured even worse than before. Yes. That was fantastic. Tortured, tortured soul. I like it. <laughs> uh, but but the dedication is the same. Um, and I think that's that's one thing that, that is parallel between the two. Uh, the amount of, of care that people have and what they work on is similar. Um, we obviously are telling a story that exists where everything about this was created from a blank piece of paper. So that was probably one of the other uh, different challenges where generating something raw versus generating something to match a known quantity, yeah. which we have had to do. We match gameplay to a storyline and, and timeline that existed. So, well, you say that, but um, I, I think we, we also discussed a little bit that there are a lot of parallels between the story being told mm -hmm. and, and the real world too. I mean, it's no doubt. Uh, I would almost compare it to the Twilight Zone and in, in making commentary through gameplay and, and creating characters and creating a world that can comment on actual society. Well, and, and it's wrapped in a, in a fun fantasy way that maybe you don't necessarily get it frying pan to the face yes. of what the message is, yeah. but it's there. Um, if you're familiar with the old movie Soylent Green, um, you know, that there's a lot of that kind of to this entire game where here's working in a meat factory and profits are really low. So what's their solution? Well, let's turn our workforce into the new meat product. Um, yeah. 
Uh, a little vicious. <laughs> well, you know, vicious or just uh, doesn't affect those that are in power, so they don't see it as a problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, you could say that, and, and as you, you read between the lines with some of the Oddworld products, you can put some associations to where there may be large corporations in the world we live in today that kind of take on some of those meanings and those thought process. And, and I think this was a way for Lauren to kind of speak out against that, um, but it, still using entertainment. Hello. Hello. Um, what, is the de- what was the development cycle like in the 90s? Okay. You had to create all the tech, right? I mean, it's, and you're really breaking new ground. Like just this idea of just, oh, we'll render something in 3D and then take screenshots of it. Like that's a pretty revolutionary idea. Is it it was not? different, and it was t- in order to maintain the, the amount of quality, the art quality that they were looking for that they couldn't do in real time. Um, it, uh, thankfully, with the second one that I was working on with Exodus, the engine was already in place, and even with this one, as I said, they were using the, uh, I think it was Demolition Man's engine, so they had something to begin with to at least drive their sprites and do all the basic functionality. Um, Exodus was turned around in nine months. Really? That's yeah. unbelievable. From from start to ship was nine months. Full QA cycle, everything. How did they do that? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, the the team really went above and beyond in, in their level of uh, dedication and determination of what they needed to get done to deliver the product. And the expectations were set clear and high. And everyone just absolutely killed themselves to beat it because they all believed in it. Everyone that worked there loved it as much as those that created it and owned it. And I think that's that's how you can achieve something like that. And why nine months? Is it just was was Demand. that the plan? It, people you, wanted it, and it was just there. You, you want to hit while the iron's hot. Yeah. And the first one was really a, a huge hit and was going on and on. Uh, with sales, and then I think got into the uh, the classic sale where it gets kind of reskinned and resold as a, as a classic. Mm. And at around the time that that was going to happen, if I recall, um, we would be able to get this out, which would be kind of a double up. Um, and you know, obviously, publishers and whatnot and their timelines and catalogs that they're trying to uh, to match. And we were working with GT Interactive at the time. Um, and, and even that was a very unique experience that I've never seen again. Um, Oddworld somehow was able to, uh, to negotiate that the publisher who was paying for it, I believe, uh, I'm not sure, I was obviously a junior, didn't have insight right. into the financials, um, wasn't allowed in the building unless invited. They couldn't come in and check up, they couldn't do anything. They just wow. had to wait for a milestone and accept the milestone. They had no oversight, no nothing. Um, they had no control, no yes, no, nothing. Um, very, very unusual. And really demanded a lot of trust from them in order to do it. But uh, Lauren and Sherry, to their word, delivered and delivered on the quality. So they, they earned it. Um, yeah, uh, cool stuff. Yeah. Um so as a level designer, are, are any of these your levels? Do you do later levels? or um, it, Again, I don't know if they carried any of the... Oh, no. I don't know if they carried any of the second game levels in the New and Tasty. Um, in Exodus, I did Boneworks. I did Fico Depot. Um, I did a good number of the Soul Store of Brew, which is the final maps, um, as well as the initial mines. So, honestly, about 50% of the levels I, I touch in some degree. Uh, which was really, really cool. Uh, the possessing of a fart was, was mine and uh, <laughs> was, was added to the game first time that a fart became a gameplay mechanic. Uh, I'm and, proud of that moment. And uh, a staple of the Oddworld series, you falling through the stranger and, and everything. It's been a pretty common mechanic. Yeah, it's pretty Very cool. cool. It's pretty cool. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your legacy was on. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird claim to fame, but I'll take it. It's humorous. It's a, it's a good time. So, um, what about ideas that got cut? Any? Uh, oh goodness. Or those? Uh, it's been almost twenty scenes. years. That would be harder to uh, harder to get into. I will say that one of the big things that they were looking at at the time, but was a technological kind of hurdle, was hurting. Um, 
really the Odd World series, from my understanding. And again, I'm not trying to. I'm, I'm going to get a phone call from Lauren on this probably. <laughs> he's going to smash me. Um, it was a lot to do with industrial versus naturalized. Those that live off the land and care for the land versus those that are willing to rape and pillage the land. Right. Um, and, and so there was a whole herding mechanic in Munch that was being looked at and um, a lot of things with crane and machinery and, and a lot of prototyping in R&D that went on. Um, I remember Unreal, Epic Games coming in and showing us the very first iteration of the Unreal Engine. Um, for us to potentially use for That's lunch. Amazing. And, oh yeah, it was fantastic. So um, there's always piles of great ideas that just don't make it. Um, unfortunately, it's been so long, I can't remember them specifically. So, I, I, yeah, it's too bad. I'm sure there was some great ones. Oh, lighting here. Oh yeah, the stealth. This poor guy. <laughs> Uh, do you have any thoughts on remaking games in Unity? I mean, in any engine, not just Unity. If it's done, it, to me, what they did well is they maintained the essence of the game. They truly just heightened it to today's standards. Um, and what they added didn't take away or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Diminish. Do it. Do it just to do it. You know right. what I mean? It, it truly it enhanced in. the experience. So. Um, from from that standpoint, I'm all for it. Um, there's games I'd still love to see remade that I think could could get something done if done right. Uh, Syndicate, I'm a huge fan of Syndicate. I think Syndicate would be a great remake um, if if done right. Uh, will it ever get the chance? Uh, who knows? They did, um, did a reboot a few years ago, but I think a lot of people said well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, it, was a reboot, it wasn't a remake. It was a reboot. It lost the essence of yeah. what I enjoyed about the first. Yeah. Um, Car Wars, you know, Auto Duel mm -hmm. was. Another one I think could be done really, really well. And, and don't try to change what it was. Remake it, but make it better with today's tech, where what they couldn't do, but you knew they wanted to, yeah. kind of like with Oddworld. They would have loved to have that kind of depth in the background of 3D and all the... Yeah, beautiful. But technology hindered it. It wasn't a lack of desire or, or want in the design. And so I think games that are doing remakes that look at doing what did they originally want to achieve and let's focus on adding that, will find probably better levels of success without losing the essence of the title. Uh, are you playing any other remakes that you found to be really well done in that regard? Or? Uh, I mean, they re they did Stranger as an HD release yeah. years ago that just yeah. blew me away. I think they're working on a Beyond Good and Evil uh, remake. i big fan of that. I actually um, would rather see Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yeah, I there's rumors both ways. I've heard, yeah. Um, you know, but you it's don't kind of see a Duke lot of Nukem thing. direct remakes, though. I mean, uh, I know the the one example I can think of is the Escapist was made multimedia fusion, so they had to remake it in Unity to deliver it onto uh, Xbox. Got it. And it's like, yeah, that's a that's a tough. It's tough when you have PC games are a little more versatile in that way, but when yeah. you want to start porting, you're All right. more limited. I need to hear this because I use yeah. sound on these. I actually close my eyes to do these. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't. Oh, okay. the, the pattern of the lights will screw me up. I need to hear it. So just give me a second. Yeah, take your time. Cool. All Very right, sorry impressive. about that. It's all good. <laughs> Yeah, ever since the beginning, the, the pattern always messed me up. So let's get him. And then do one of these real quick. <laughs> so Oddworld also has this essence of that 90s game focus where, like, secrets were huge and lots of, you know... Games were not thorough tutorials necessarily. It was like you explore this yeah. world and you're gonna run into some cool stuff, and then your friend tells you like, "Hey, have you done this?" And yeah. um, do you think we've we've kind of lost that? Is that something? Oh, I'm I'm a big believer that gaming has gotten easier as it be, has become more mainstream. I, I think players get frustrated a lot easier these days. So game makers, in order to alleviate that frustration have created systems that really just slowly reduce the difficulty of the game to nothing. Yeah. Um, even to the point of dynamic systems now where 
you dive four times in the same area, suddenly you jump twice as far and no, that gap is no longer an issue. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Um, and for some games, I don't think there's wrong, and, and this is something we've talked about, a true story mode where let's say there's somebody who really isn't interested in the game, but they want, they're really curious and interested in, in living out the story. So is there a way that you can reduce the gameplay to almost just click through and let them experience the story and remove that challenge? Is that a bad thing? I don't think it's bad. Um, but I also don't think that every... Did I just kill him a dog? I did. I think you did. <laughs> Back in my gums, killing people. See how that works? Um, so yeah. they've definitely gotten easier than I would ever like to see them. Um, as a gamer myself, but, you know, is it bad to expose it to other people who may not have the hand-eye coordination and get frustrated and walk away from it? I think there's some great stories that are better to tell than, than to keep a bar of difficulty so high that you limit who can experience it. So it's, it's a double issue. I'm torn. I'm torn. It's, it's definitely tough, especially, I mean, you know, the off-road games weren't the easiest games. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. But though, as you just saw, I got chunked. Um, the first one, that was the biggest criticism, was the uh, continuation system. It was rough, and that's why in Odyssey, the difference between Odyssey and Exodus was a, in Exodus, was a save anywhere. You could be in the middle of a jump, 12 explosions, eight enemies, and it would save it in that state. So when you loaded it, it would be exactly in that state with those explosions in the middle of the air, with all those enemies active in the right frame, um, so it was it was definitely a challenging game. And you know, it's a puzzle game. Uh, ultimately, it's got a lot of personality and character, but it is a puzzle game. And when you designed it, did you always have that approach like this is a puzzle game, or oh, did yeah. you ever see it as like, oh, well, I want to make sure there's extra platforms, or is there is there a skill element, or is it all logic? No, it's all logic and timing, um, and that's really where we spent our time was getting our our timing windows narrowed down as close as we could to make it as hard as it could be, and then we would pull it back a little bit, pull it back so that it, it allowed a little bit wider player margin and, of error. Um, but it was all about the stories being told through the movies and the locations and what's happening. But when we got into laying out levels, pure puzzles. Um, and one of the big parts to that was in a big belief of uh, Lorne that pushed, and you actually see it more and more as the games went along down the path, was allow the player to see the puzzle before they have to engage and initiate the puzzle. So you can see all the components, and then it's like, okay, then you jump into it and it's real time trying to solve it, um, which was different. Um, in this one, they didn't do it as much. In the second Exodus, you get it a lot where you can go into the background scenery, walk across the entire map, see all the moving parts and then come back and then run through it and have a sense of what was happening from screen to screen. So it was pretty cool. Oh goodness, this is not gonna go well. Yeah. How does it feel to be back into it? It's I mean, awesome. It? I, uh, yeah, before the interview, you had to play the first game, a build of the first game, yeah. before you even had your interview. You had to finish what they had built. <laughs> That's a pretty good application process. Oh, absolutely. And, and now that we've got a product in place, um, if, if we're looking to expand our team, that's absolutely a, a part of what we will ask of that person. I mean, we want somebody who wants to work on the game that we're building and have also a good understanding of what it is we're building. So, uh, yeah, it was cool. It was really cool. It was like, uh, okay, um, I girlfriend at the time, not, not now my wife, honey, I, I really have to focus and play this game. I, uh, <laughs> there's just no if, ands, or buts about it. And it was great. Was Job was on the line here. So, like, listen. And I fell for it right away. It, it took no time at all to, to realize how much I, I was going to enjoy this. And uh, I think they understood that I got it right away in the interview because we were able to talk mechanics without hesitation and uh, what I would add to it to change the experience and all that. Good stuff. So you come in the tail end of the Odyssey. Yeah. Work on Exodus, get that out in nine months. And then Munch came out six 
years later? Um, it wasn't quite that long. Um, it was a long dev cycle. I wasn't there for the whole of that. Oh, what happened to him? Oh. I don't think he's feeling good. No, he didn't. I think I smashed him. I didn't mean to. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> um, it did take a while, but I, I actually worked on the pre-production with about Munch. Um, spent a lot of time working with Lauren on, on one, how do we unify Abe and Munch together so that they needed each other? Um, what is the emotional attachment to this ugly little creature? Yeah. Um, and what is his mechanic that made him unique to Abe? Because he was supposed to inject something new. And we knew we wanted him as Abe controls nature with his portals and, and his chanting and whistles and all that. Um, Munch was to interact with technology. And, and so we knew that part. Um, oops. Back then, MIRC was kind of a chat protocol. It's still around, and yeah, I'm yeah. sure it's still heavily used by oh, yeah, quite definitely. a few folks. Um, back then, I would you know cruise around on MIRC to a bunch of different chat channels and stuff, and happened to come across one that was labeled Disabled Gamers. And uh, was kind of curious, what, what were they talking about? And popped in there, and this was after, I don't know, I don't remember, Monday, Tuesday, or whatever, but it was a weekday and after work, and uh, they were talking about being underrepresented as characters in video games as a whole. Oh, man. Oh. And uh, I couldn't argue with them. I mean, I couldn't cite an example at the time of a character with a physical handicap that was changed how a character played in a video game. Mm -hmm. there, there were none. Um, so at, at another point after hours, um, hanging out with Lauren and just kind of talking about things. We used to watch a lot of like nature attacks videos and stuff, right. which was cool. Um, happened to mention it to him and talk about the idea of putting Munch in a wheelchair and how with the new dual analog stick controller, that kind of became a pretty natural motion of moving both sticks forward in unison as you would uh, wheelchair wheels. Right. Um, and, and so his, kind of, his eyes kind of got a little big and we started to realize that that both gave us not just a mechanic, but it answered the other questions of, well, now we know why he needs Abe to get pushed around, um, as well as the emotional attachment of, here's this cool little guy and He's handicapped, you know. He's he's got a, a physical disability, which doesn't prohibit him from contributing and, and being a hero, but definitely presents a different level of challenges that he may not otherwise, you know, uh, you may not otherwise experience in a game. Uh, so it was really really cool, and it, it was great to to see something come from that that was useful and ultimately, in my opinion, very successful and. People may not realize that that kind of was where the idea originated, um, and it because it doesn't really read that way in the game, in my opinion. Um, but that, to me, it was pretty pretty cool moment uh, to have happen. So that that meant a lot to me, um, and that was really what I did with Munch uh, mostly. And at that point, I had moved on, um, wanted to kind of grow my creative wings and. Uh, look back at that time as I'm glad I did because I've learned a lot since, but at the same time, um, I have always missed working with the Oddworld characters and always will. They are special. So, where did you end up after Oddworld? 3DO. Wow. Yeah. And what properties did they, because I know obviously the Army Men were the ones I played. I was in charge of Sarge's Heroes multiplayer maps and game modes for uh, N64. And wow. that was really the jump was I was getting more into the management side. I was getting a step up into a lead role. Uh, so I stepped in and, and helped out with uh, wrapping up and, and leading the multiplayer efforts on Sarge's Heroes. And then after that, being the lead design on the spinoff, which was, uh, uh, Vicky character and oh god, uh, Portal Runner. Um, and then after that, yeah, I moved on from there and did other Continued. things. Yep, off to work on Dinotopia, the James Gurney IP, um, and then uh, yeah, on and on and on. Doing it a while now. So, so like looking back, if you could encapsulate everything you learned at Oddworld, like what is like the most important thing that you took from all those experiences? 
don't be afraid to be creative. Um, it, it's, oh God, it's hard to say. It really, passion, mm-hmm. passion. It takes passion. And I was too young at the time to really understand it. But walking away, and I've even reached back to Lauren many, many years later going, you know, I screwed up with you guys here, here, and here. Um, and I learned from it, but I could have done more. I could have been better. I could have helped here, you know. And they don't look at it that way, thankfully. <laughs> I, but, you know, it, looking back on something and then being able to say, I could have been better and contributed more here or whatnot. But ultimately, what it gave me was a sense for the rest of my career of what it takes to create a hit and not just a hit in numbers but in minds and hearts yeah it resonated with people and so I saw it firsthand of what it would take to to do it and it's hard to do it's hard to replicate not a lot of companies do it Um, I'm still chasing it I will get it I'm getting closer each time and I will get it and we've got the talent here where we will get it and be able to to enjoy um, at, at a point similar success and uh but it takes a lot of work a lot of effort oh no doubt yeah um which kind of leads to uh last question i have for you which right. is um oh. are you one that wants to look back at the old projects and say hey i could revisit this and i could improve it somehow or are you someone that's like okay here's that experience close that box i learned i'm going to move on to something new and change it um I think that it depends on the project and the idea. Some things fit to where if I can, even if I had an idea for a whole other game, but there's a singular mechanic to it that would make sense to, to deploy in another game and, and kind of prove it, um, that's a good, good method. Um, I learn more from my mistakes than my successes. And I, I think that's yeah. a good, good thing for most people to follow. So Definitely. I'm always willing to look back but I'm always excited by the clean sheet of paper and creating something new. Um, using those views back to help define what that full review is going to be. So it's, it's a combination of the balance. Don't get too hung up on your past and trying to carry all your baggage forward uh, because then you'll shut yourself down from learning new things from other people that have experiences and things to share. So. Very true. Yep. This game is Odd World New and Tasty, which is the remake of. Love it. Did a great job. Yeah. Just add water. Beautiful job. This is a remake of Abe's Odyssey. Odd World came out in 1995. Oh, God. Uh, no, don't. No, is it really that old? I think so, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, Mike Madden worked on uh, tail end of this. Uh, uh, his big contribution is obviously in Exodus yeah. and uh, some pre-production to uh, much. much. Yeah. Uh, we, Mike, is uh, currently our director of development here at Kingdom Games. Project Five Guardians, David flagship title, out on Steam. Big update coming very soon. In hours, I want to say. I mean, uh, yeah, you know what? It could be. Yeah. We're we're right on the last bits of some testing it, and uh, we'll be pushing it out to Steam. Mm-hmm. I know me and you have been working on patch notes, yep. and there is a lot. Oh, it's, um, it's that extensive. we had to put together. So, Very extensive. Uh, I'm hoping y'all really get to see the benefit of it. Uh, huge performance gains that we're seeing. We hope that carries over to everybody's rig out there and, and that their machine sees it and it smooths out that ride. Yeah. Uh, Kingdom Games ATX on all your favorite social media, kingdomgames.com, fiveguardiansofdavid.com. Um, Mike, I will give you the final word. Do uh, you want to talk Oddworld or do you want to talk uh, Kingdom? I actually just want to say play games. Okay. Play games. A lot to learn from them. There's good life lessons. Uh, don't hesitate to let a kid, although supervised on what the content is, play games. Uh, raises your reading comprehension. Uh, gets your writing skills improved. And, and if you do find that it's a passion of yours, stay in school. Track down what's best to learn and, uh, and pursue your dreams. And um, you you'll find that you're happier every day when you're able to do that. And um, I think that we're all fortunate that we get to do that every day um, here at Kingdom. And and hopefully the work that we're producing is showing how much we love what we do here. So I think uh, we're both examples of people that 
followed their dreams yeah. and, and fought to get where they are, and yeah. here we are. Yes, sir. And if we can do it, I mean, I, yeah. I don't know about you, but if, if I can do it, I think. I, uh, anyway. <laughs> I, I, I got my GED. I didn't finish high school. So yeah. if you care hard, if you care and want something bad enough, uh, the world is certainly in a place now where it will provide the means and the resources for you to, to find it and, and get it into your life how you want it. So Absolutely. Um, yeah, get after it. Yeah. Cool. Play games. Uh, next Play. week, we will be back with everyone's favorite art director, Stephen Dinelli. We're going to do some more concepts of some stuff. Uh, who knows where that will end up in the future? I'll let, I'll let everyone speculate on that. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We are out.